Testing, testing, one, two, three, testies. Uh, oh, testies. Megan laughing. I made a podcast to you guys. It's a brand new, beautiful <clears throat> podcast studio. And we're back. And we're back. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, yeah. Are we starting? Oh, we're always. We, are we going to ask that question every time? Just not oh. start. Uh, just felt false. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it like a happy. Happy New Year! Your dead, dead <laughs> eyes. Mm. Dead I'm eyes. saying it, but you're not believing it. Because New Year's, are they happy? Or are they just new. time? Or are they just new? Time? Yeah. Time passing? I'm I'm feeling very happy. Yeah, me too. I'm feeling good. We've been having fun. We have. We're here in the... Um, in, this is uh, the writer's rooms of... Uh, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, season 16. Mm-hmm. We are in the thick of it. We, yeah, we, we are, are under the gun. We've got how many weeks before we start shooting? Three? No, not even. No, uh, 11, two, uh, two 10 days? 10, day, uh, 10 work days? Uh, uh, Oof. Uh, uh, 16 <laughs> days? I, yeah. No, I don't know. I, I, I think we are. 16 days is so. Uh, 16 days, but like, yeah, like only like 10 work days or something like that. I don't well, know. we're going to have to dip into the weekends and late at night. <sighs> You know, to get it done. Man, I've been parking real close to the pole. I hope you've been satisfied. You guys, wait. Okay, so this is good. Actually, it's good that you brought that up. So we're in a parking garage right now, and I am squeezed in between Those? two. So it's a three. It's it's my like, car and Charlie's. There's car. three <laughs> yeah. spots. There's yeah. three spots, and then and then columns, right? Yeah. And Charlie's on the right, and Meg's on the left, and I'm squeezed right in the middle. <laughs> so nervous. And Every I gotta I say, <laughs> no. Listen, I, I you should be because I would be very upset. But you guys are just. I mean. It seems like it seems to be we're working. Na- we're nailing but it, right? But it's only working because you guys are parking so close to the column. If yeah, you weren't, yeah. It, yeah. we would all be. Yeah, you taught us a little something about your needs and, and responded and you to them. And we listened. You we responded. Listened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, is that going to carry? Now, are you only doing that for me or would you do no, that if No, I wasn't? think that's going to carry on in, in my life. My poll work will be a little bit, <laughs> you know, more uh, professional now yeah. that I know it will uh, please someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have a lot of work to do. Like, like uh, we, yeah, we don't. Shouldn't. We should not be in this room right now. No, but um, but it, it's good. It's it's nice to be in here taking a break. But man, frankly, we yeah, it's more fun. But Megan, how are you coming on your draft? I spent most of the day setting up this room. Okay, that was what I was worried about. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, no, I I'm coming along fine. Um, I kind of skipped past the hardest scene, which is the like setup scene of all of the stories. Finding a fun way to do that is so difficult. Like actually I noticed it in this episode that we're talking about mortgage crisis. You found such a fun way to like get both stories started because you just did that bit of like Dee coming in with her news and you guys all ignoring her. And then Frank coming in and you immediately being interested in his news and kind of comparing the two and thinking maybe we'll combine them, but then ultimately just ditching her thing, which is just like gave it some energy. And so I'm in that scene now. And it's like, it's, I'm trying to find like a fun way to get all the information out that I need to, in order to get the story started, which are really fun. So I just started writing the other scenes. It is funny to go, to look at these older episodes and be like, wait, wait, what was happening in the world? Like there was more, it was, is it, was it the 2008 mortgage crisis that we were dealing with? Like, yeah, where, oh yeah. like so. we shot yeah. the episode in 2009. We actually broke the original, ver- we broke this story in 2008. Mm-hmm. For season four, we broke it in season. We broke the we story. We did, for, and yeah. So we're talking about the mortgage crisis. Do you want, yeah. want to do the intro for yeah, this episode? Um, oh we yeah, yeah, we'll fill yeah, people little in. Little structure. Remember that from yeah. last year. Little structure. Um. So yeah, we're talking. We've started season five today. Uh, the gang exploits the mortgage crisis. Um. It aired on September seventeenth, two thousand and nine. It was written by Becky Mann and Audra Seeloff, mm-hmm. and directed by Randall Einhorn. In this episode, Frank buys a foreclosed house with intentions of selling it for prop- profit. Mac and Dennis become hot-headed real estate brokers, and Dee takes advantage of a suburban couple looking to hire a surrogate mother. So yeah, we, that's we, it. We broke that's this it. story in two thousand eight um, in the writers' room of season four. Wait, were Becky and Audra on season four? Uh, they were. That I believe. I yes. think so. I think they that were was in season, season four, and season then four, yes. the first draft they got in was season five. Is that right? Well, I, no, or maybe they had I can't remember why we four. kicked it. Uh, I, I I don't know if it was because we, 
why did we kick that to, to season five? Do you remember why? Oh, we, I don't know? we just came up with a thing that we're like, this will be better this season. I don't, for whatever reason. <sighs> Yeah, it's th- so nice and so rarely happens where we have an extra episode. Oh, <laughs> that you can throw was, in. Yeah, Water go- Park was that. Yeah, but right. Yeah, yeah. Going into season five, yeah, it was like I remember being like, "Oh, we have that like mortgage crisis thing." It's mm-hmm. like almost. I, I don't remember what state it was in, but I remember knowing it was an episode. Which- it's just a really good cold. I just like really enjoyed the cold open, and it was when I was writing today. I was like, I just need something like that that makes it like fun to get all that information out because mm-hmm. it is a lot. Like you got to set up all the stuff about like where the outlines only like- ever go so far, yeah. right? So we'll be in the room. We'll mm-hmm. break out what each scene is going to be, but then how you actually execute the scene. Yeah is really what makes the scene work. So there's a version of that cold open where D comes in, spouts her information, Frank does his, but without the joke, then what is yeah. the scene? So you always have to come up with like, well, what is the, and it's never easy. It's, yeah. it's yeah, figuring out how to bury the exposition. <laughs> yeah. And what order to, to pull it out. Like if there's, if you're getting out all this information, it's like how, what order, what's the most what's effective necessary? order? Yeah, what's what necessary? What do you need in this uh-huh. scene versus, yeah, I'm stuck in that, on that one. But I just moved ahead to other scenes and I'll like go back, I think, to that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll get it done Thursday, right? I have till Thursday. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thursday morning. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, so here's yeah. something, here's a fascinating <laughs> phenomenon uh, that we've, that we've, just become accustomed to, but usually when we would say, oh, okay, let's, let's have the, the scripts in by Thursday. And we always forget, we always forget to say Thursday morning, mm-hmm. because if you say Thursday, that's a Friday, and rightfully so people want to do their best and they want to make sure they have as much time as they, they can. I we get it, but it'll be Thursday at 1159 and you'll get something in your inbox. We'll be yeah. asleep. <laughs> because it will right. be Rob Roselle will wait until the absolute mm-hmm. last. Me- Megan will get it in early in the morning. I'll try. Roselle will get it in there unless we say Thursday morning. Mm-hmm. The last possible minute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so he's it goes. technically correct, but we can't work on it on Thursday. Right. Yeah. But we can't work on them all on Thursday anyway. Well, that's technically, true. we should that's true. kind of stagger them. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. That's why my move is to turn in a draft and then keep working on it and then turn in another draft. Yeah, that's if you guys haven't started reading it. <laughs> Megan has yeah, an insane that, that, that is that's not a bad move. So strange. Yeah, right. No, Megan, that's Megan's turning in your Charlie deadline. That move. <laughs> right. And if we just happen to be free and we get to it, but if you yeah. don't, you're like, hey, read this one instead. Because yes. I had the extra time yeah. I wanted. Yes. Why not? But if you didn't and we started, you could always walk in the room and say, hey, I had these other ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to pop it in. Keep yeah. the thing moving. Probably, though, the fastest draft that I would write would be the best one. Because I think that my drafts become overcomplicated when I, like, get Start picking to, them apart. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I almost think the best version of it is the thing that I can never do, which, which I always try to do, which is just shit out something as fast as possible with, like, no attempt at jokes, like the most basic, what just what is needed for the scene and then move on mm-hmm. and then go back and like make it kind of funny here and there. Well, we talk about this all the time. I don't, I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast, but um, one mantra that we've adopted, certainly in Mythic Quest, but we talk about it a lot on this show is just get it wrong faster. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and we all do that. Like I, we just try to turn it around as quickly as possible to get it back to the collective because there is no wrong and there is no right. So the quicker you can get it back into the process of as many really funny uh, m- minds as possible, the the better for the, the episode. As long as you know what matters, because like if you're, if you turn in a draft that's like a, just a total fucking mess, then, then you're creating more work for everybody, mm-hmm. right? But if you're creating, if, if, if the story's working, if the characters all have motivations and everyone's got like an arc and the story has a good, yes, but you have, if, if it's a 24 to 26 page script and you're a professional writer mm-hmm. and it's already been broken, you have, and you have seven days to do it. If you spent all day, every day working on that script, there's no, there, it should not take you seven days to get there, right? But most likely it gets you to three or four and then you're fine tuning. And then the question becomes, when does it become diminishing returns to where you're fine tuning things uh, that won't wind up structurally even. Yeah, for for a listener at home, I mean, ideally before we send someone off on a draft, so much of the work has been done in the room of outlining that there's enough there that yes, you should be able to turn it around in that much time. Not to say that you should be able to write a script in seven days, um, but like we've done a lot of work before you go off to write yeah. that script. Yeah, yeah. This episode, the mortgage crisis, is a great example of something that has a lot of 
really funny ideas and moments and scenes and characters and things that have stood the the test of time. People, I hear about Vic Vinegar all the time mm -hmm. or Bird Honey Law. This is the birth law, of yeah. Bird Law, and yet I don't I don't think this episode is very good at all. But That's there's fine. there's I really like fun and funny moments in it. Well, I like about the bird law conversation that you think it's just like a classic downbeat of you guys talking about something that like doesn't mm -hmm. matter at all at the beginning about whether you can keep a hummingbird as a pet. Says the guy who knows nothing about the law. I can it's absolutely keep a hummingbird as a pet, bro. It's no different than having a parrot or a parakeet. It's a bird, you bro. Really, you really can't. And I'm not saying I agree with it. It's just that bird law in this country, it's not governed by reason. There's no such thing as bird yes, law. Yes, there is. You're I don't even remember why 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 we thought it was what, like what was the deal with Bird? Who came up with that? Like the idea of like there being laws that specifically govern how birds work, or it's hard to remember. Is it yeah, meant to be? Yeah. Is it meant to be like how? What, what are the laws amongst birds, or is it meant to be like what are the laws? What are the laws regarding, regarding man bird, and re bird? Yeah, regarding man and bird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like well, what, what was funny about it? Like just like. Birds were funny, like conversations about seagulls and mm. hummingbirds and things that w was funny. And then, and then like the parameters around like, well, there probably are some kind of rules for, you know, you're probably not allowed to keep a bald eagle in your house or something. I, I don't know. Like some birds would be protected. Yeah. So just feeling like there was an area of, of legal expertise that Charlie <laughs> felt as though he had some... Yeah. You know, or I felt I, I, as though I had some ownership over. I guess yeah. that was it. I, I, how can you remember? It's so long ago. I ran into Randall Einhorn this year. Again, directed, Randall, Randall Einhorn, who directed this episode, and has directed many episodes. Yeah, but he hasn't directed many in, in a while. So no, ma maybe while. his last season was like eight or something, you know? I'm not sure. And it was funny to see him and be like, wow, it's a long time since I've seen you, yeah. you know? And yet you know him so well. Cause Where'd you see him? Did you work with him? No, I just bumped it at, at it like, a, like a Hollywood function thing. Mm -hmm. No, you go to Hollywood parties? I went to one. You went to big parties? Really? <laughs> now, what, now, that actually sounds a lot more interesting than, yeah. than the podcast. What kind of function? Tell us about was that. A, what was the function? What was a soiree? A okay, party? Okay, hold on. It? it was a soiree, but I have to remember what it was specifically. If it was like Oscars or Emmys or one of those <laughs> things where everyone dresses up. Um, How dressed up were you? Uh, medium, probably. Co cocktail you know? attire? Uh, yeah, dressed cocktail up medium. attire, right? Up and medium. it was raining, so I remember there was a tent. <laughs> And okay. I saw Danny there, and Danny uh, DeVito. Yes, He's I saw a giant movie Randall star. Einhorn. I saw Paul Walter Hauser, who uh, Paul, who, who played our Juggalo, and he's gone on to be a, a great, great actor. Um, oh, Paul. So you know, I I saw Scott Martyr there, and I said, "Come back and write the season." He's like, oh, "I don't know if I can." And then he proceeded to, meet, to tell me a really funny story about how his dad had been ordering this meat, and he get, got this great deal on this meat. And then only like later, like months later for his wife to realize that he had been ordering dog food and didn't realize he was He'd eating been this eating dog yeah. food. Yeah. And a, we're like, this is why we why need you back in deal. the writer's room. That's a perfect Frank storyline. Yeah. And he's like, I'm back. And then he's not been back. But we just found out today he's back. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so, dog, yes. food, dog food during the day and cat food at night is pretty funny. Yeah, there you go. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you got to balance it out. <laughs> you know, because the cat um, food will put you to sleep. You can't eat cat food during the day. I'll put you to sleep. And I'll tell you what, like I'll tell you who, who's good at those parties is Mary Elizabeth. I mean, we went to one of them and she winds up bumping uh, shoulders, rubbing shoulders with Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift's like, I'm a huge Sonny fan. And uh, mm -hmm. and then she's like, be in my music video. So uh, not nothing like that ever happens to me. I just speak to people I already know. <laughs> yeah, same, right. yeah, yeah, I kind of <laughs> you know, do that like, too, I'm yeah. like, hey, we know each other. We can well, talk. Also, like I assume with somebody like Taylor Swift, I'm like, she does not want to talk to me. That's you know I mean, I, that's my assumption. That's, that's my, my assumption first going assumption in. I'm like, I'm like, she wants to talk to like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio or somebody. She doesn't want to talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but little do I know, she, she, she desperately wants to talk yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. Apparently. So according anyway, so Randall story, Einhorn, that was wild. According to that, that story, was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume next time I see her that she wants. To talk so to Taylor me. Swift was also at this party. That was a different one. Oh, that was uh, all sorts of these. I went to two. Two parties. <laughs> two parties. Two parties. <laughs> two functions. Yes. Two functions. Wow. Yes. I went to the one. Uh, where and you don't remember what either function was about? They or? were like uh, industry night things. It was either Oscars or Emmys. They had these big old parties and everyone gets together and I never go. And Mary Elizabeth was like, you never go to these Why things. Why would Taylor Swift go to the Oscars or the Emmys? I mean, he doesn't know what doesn't the know party what was. was. He's I just don't throwing know out which one it was. It we was... have to call Mary Elizabeth and she'll know. What Here's the, how I always feel. Well, I'm not invited to the Oscars or the Emmys or anything. So why the fuck would I go to any of these things? 
And and Mary Elizabeth says, because it's good. You meet people. It's and, good. She, and she's right. She meets people. <laughs> and <laughs> I do. see people I know. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's not totally true. I, I, I like those, do I tend like to those parties. They tend to be very yes, fun. Yes, they're, they're fun. very fun. You very meet someone, fun. you find out they're a fan, and it's fun. It's good. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It, but you it, also meet someone and, and you say that you're a fan and they seem like not so interested. Yeah, and you're like, well, you that are. sucks. Yeah, that's, that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bummer. You're like, at this point, like, come on. Yeah, yeah, well, oh, well. <laughs> I tell you my uh, Matthew McConaughey, not Matthew McConaughey. Um, oh, Christ, there goes the brain, people. Uh oh. We've been writing all day, though. Matthew Broderick. The Matthew Broderick's story. Matthew Broderick. Are you? Oh no, I haven't. Did heard you ever run in with Broderick? I did. Okay. We were at uh, SNL's 40th anniversary party, mm -hmm. and that was a fun night. Everybody who was everyone was there except you guys. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> well, this was a, this was a while, 40th. That was a while ago. Yeah. yeah, this was a while ago. Like 10 years ago. Yeah, like something like that. Now, yeah, I'm like, there's Matthew Broderick. I'll say hi. I'll say hello. Sure. And he's kind of blowing me off. Like I'm just like some fan, and he's blowing me off. He's not being a dick, but he's also like. You know, really not engaging me. And uh, just at one point I go, just so you know, uh, I'm a person of value. <laughs> you oh. said that? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. I've never told you the story? What a move. N no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that stopped and got his attention. And he laughed. Did he laugh? Yeah, yeah, he laughed. And then we we chatted for a minute. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It seems weird for, for a guy who literally just told us that he goes to these parties and only talks to people that he knows for you to be not only trying to talk to Matthew Broderick, but being so insistent upon it that you would say something to him, like, just so you know. Well, and I know you were joking, but yeah, well, yeah, I'm joking. But like after <laughs> probably because, yeah, I don't feel like I have great interactions at those things. And then I would probably be just like, ah, fuck it, man. Come on. Fuck off. Yeah. Fuck off, man. <laughs> Talk to me for a second. <laughs> and that was good. He was lovely. It was. It was funny. And is that fun. because you're a big Matthew Broderick fan? Were you I excited to talk to Matthew yes. Broderick? What do you? What are you? What are? What are your favorite Matthew? Broderick? Election. It's oh yeah, movie. he's great in Election. Great movie, and he's great in it. Yeah, yeah. Faris Bioler's Day Off. <laughs> oh, yeah. the French yeah. film. Yeah, the French, yeah, the French film. film. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And others. <laughs> <laughs> are back with a brand new year of podcasts and thus a brand new year of ads. Yes, a brand new year of brands. There you go. And what better way to kick it off than uh, being supported by our good friends at, hey, Athletic Greens, guys. Athletic Greens, Athletic Greens is right. back. Yeah, that's right. Now, maybe some of you are just tuning in for the first time. Maybe your New Year's resolution was to listen to that Always Sunny podcast that everybody everybody's talking about, in which case you haven't heard us talk about Athletic Greens before or their delicious green powder, AG1. Yeah, well, shout out to you, okay? First time Creeper listener. And boy, uh, man, are you got, you are in for a treat. Literally, it is a treat because it tastes so good. And AG1 is a product I literally use every day with one scoop. You're getting 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. Think about how good your body will feel with all that support. That is a body that just won't quit. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash sunny. You want the stuff, you know, go get go get it there. Yeah, get it there. You know, again, that is athleticgreens.com slash sunny to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's help, but better. BetterHelp is an online therapy service that allows you to talk to a licensed professional from anywhere you choose. You can even switch therapists whenever you feel like it. I've used BetterHelp before and it was great. It's super convenient that it's online so I can take calls from wherever I am. I could even take one from the podcast studio if I needed to. Mm -hmm. We do have good chairs for it. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want my therapy sessions recorded though, but you never know. I feel like what we do on the podcast uh, sometimes is kind of a form of therapy, you know. But then again, none of us are <laughs> none of us are licensed, and that's really what makes the difference here, right? When you're talking to someone who's an expert in what you've gone through or 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 are going through, that 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 is truly invaluable. All you got to do is fill out a questionnaire on betterhelp.com and get started. Plus, Sunny's going to get you 10% 
off. In 2023, we're not just getting help, we're getting better help. So if you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash sunny today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash sunny. Charlie and I got into a fight. Uh, we got into well in the parking wow. lot. I mean, what? You, wait, when you had to, po- God, Glenn, you, no, no, not following. Nah, nah, nah. He was trying to do a bit. Oh, that wasn't funny. Um, <laughs> no, none so, of it's funny. I was trying to perpetuate the for yeah for the, the myth. Yeah, for the um, I find I find myths annoying. <laughs> You know, it's like, okay. like, like, like gossiping. I'm irritated by make, a myth. <laughs> make sh- making shit up and it's like, eh. Make shit up. Hate. You Get hate. the fucking facts. What about Greek, Greek myths? You hate it? Joseph Campbell. Oh, no, no, no. A fictional myth is fine. Oh. But okay. being like, you know, Glenn was like crossing his leg uh, all episode and I think he might have testicular cancer. <laughs> Oh, like, yeah. Come on, that's like come conspiracy on. theory. That's a conspiracy yeah, yeah, theory. yeah, yeah, you're right. That's yeah, not yeah. a myth. That's yeah, right. and there was a lot of conspiracy theories. Yeah, there was conspiracy re-editing theory. of like, what, oh, what we're talking great. about is the, like, yeah. should I tell listeners, great. we were talking about the live episode that we did um, uh, for the holidays to raise money for charity. And um, Charlie and Rob had a very like, I don't, didn't think you guys were no, that as a matter heated fact, at all. I, I, we were. Uh, if if anybody said, no, it's if a anyone thinks that, that was, if anyone thinks that that was fighting, that that's coming from someone who has no ability to uh, work through confrontation yes. in a, in a healthy way. That was a, I would say that that was a very healthy uh, confrontational feels like too strong of a word, but, but it was somewhat confrontational in the sense that you were, Confronting Charlie about something, an issue that you have with him sometimes when we're writing or when we're working on the show. And, but that doesn't, but like, there's so many negative connotations that, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't have to be that way. We should be able to have very honest and open conversations about issues that we're having with each other, with each other and do it in a way that's, uh, you know, productive and helpful. But it didn't actually seem like we were in a fight, right? It was, it was fun that when somebody re-edited. They re-edited it to make it look No, I think it was because we were (laughs) arguing about a creative point on filter, which is much more true to how the show works, right? Like. Although there was booze involved, but like we was, have those, oh yeah, we have booze. those arguments all, all the time. time. Oh, I, maybe I'm time. just so desensitized. I have those kinds of conversations with almost everybody yeah. in my life. I know, but that's so know. but you are you are unique in that regard. But you guys have those arguments with each other, and have what? You guys have those same kind of arguments with each yeah, other, absolutely. and I'm sure yeah. I have them with you as well. well like, we have I have them with Meg all the time. Yeah, no, Meg, I've not had an argument with you like that, but. No. It, no, but I, I feel will. it's coming. You know what I mean? Like I feel, it's like, I mean, it's One day. Coming. I feel like it's, you know what I mean? It's on yeah. deck. It's right on the precipice. It's right on there. the tip of our, you no, know. No, I don't. Like, I mean, honestly, that wasn't even an argument. It was like you saying the thing that you think is important. Charlie saying the thing he thinks is important. Neither of you were asking the other person to change. You no, were just like. Rob said things like, and I think you're dead wrong. <laughs> now, to yeah, most but, people, to most people, yeah. that comes off as extremely confrontational and negative. To Rob, that's just like, I'm telling you how I feel. I'm not saying I'm right. Yeah. And that's the difference is that is that if you're saying you are dead wrong and I know I'm right, that to me is the difference between it being healthy and unhealthy. When you say, if somebody says in a creative conversation like, this is what I think and you think this way and I have to say, I think you're dead wrong. But as long as the openness to finding out that I'm actually the one that's dead wrong is is there, mm-hmm. then I think it's a healthy confrontation. As long as you're willing to, you're never, yeah. that's the thing. Like, well, we have I don't know arguments. how you could ever have a conversation with somebody and not express the way you feel, or you're just lying. People do I it think, all the time. Think, are you kidding me, dude? What I think though, like, just because there was like a little booze involved, it had a little bit less of the breaks that it would normally have, you know what I mean? Like it, we would have the same conversation it was just maybe down one peg. So I think mean, people <laughs> instead of, like, yeah, instead yeah, of yeah. at an eight, it would be at a seven. Yeah, 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 seven. But like, but you didn't but seem angry more fun, when you were saying it. No, you just, just seemed like booze. you were being honest, honest to, a, to a degree that I think the average person would be very uncomfortable with. <laughs> Around somebody they've known yeah. for 20 no, no, years. No, no, no. Uh, wow. Dude, people, you, uh, I guess. Oh, people, yeah, people, people go through entire marriages. For 40 years without really I can't wrap things. my head around that. Which, I can't. No, neither can I, by the way. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you. I'm 100% I with can. you. I think. <laughs> I think Charlie and I could do it. Like, I just avoid conflicts that much. So no, no, I, think, I, 
And I think that we, and I think, you know, look, I avoid it a little bit. I don't think I avoid it quite as much as you do, but I, I will I say that we've gotten to much avoid better it at more. it. Yeah. I think I'm pretty good now at just being like hearing the information, taking a second with it, and then just be like, no, I think this, mm -hmm. you know, but that was a, that took a while to develop. I think in the beginning I would avoid it. Like it's a, it, yeah. Cause it like can crazy. be uncomfortable. It's like, it's, it's, it's hard. And you feel that, like you feel your ego, right? You say yeah. something to me like, you say something to me like, I think you're dead wrong about this. There's always going to be this little part of me, that, that, that ego part of me that goes, that goes, the fuck does this guy think he is? Fuck this guy. Like, he's, but how dare he fucking say that to me? I'm dead fucking wrong. Like, mm -hmm. that's bullshit, you know? But then I go, but then I go, oh, no, that's just my ego. Like, he's saying he thinks I'm dead wrong. That's just his opinion. He is entitled to his opinion. And who the fuck am I to say that he's not entitled to that opinion? I can argue my point and I can try to convince you how and why I'm not dead wrong. You know, but I should also confront the possibility that maybe I am dead wrong. But something That's that we always do, and anytime we have a discussion like that, is we have a post discussion afterwards, right? Like a follow up, which we did do the next day, which was like, I think I was thinking this, I think you were thinking this, I think we were thinking this in the room, and this is why we're feeling this way, which is why we've worked together for, I mean, 16 seasons, but 20 years. Yeah. You know? Yeah, 20 years this year, actually. Uh, 2003, yeah, 2003, the fall of 2003 was when we shot the very first version of the home movie. Yeah, buddy. Wow. Yeah, buddy. So this, mar this will mark the 20th year of us working together. You guys going to do anything? We should. A special little something? With we each other? Will. Yeah. We probably Let's, won't, but we should. <laughs> All right. Well, should we talk about the mortgage episode? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I yeah. want to talk about Brian Unger in this oh, episode. He's the best. <laughs> Brian Unger, man, is so damn fun. A so lot of good great. actors in this episode. Like mm -hmm. PJ Byrne works mm -hmm. PJ Byrne. All, all the time. Uh, yeah. Is it Burke or Burn? Burn. Burn, uh, yeah. Burn. Burn. Tad. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is that the dad of yep. the um, family that owns the house? Yeah. Or, no. no. Oh, it's the... It's the guy we're se we want to sell the house to. He's the guy he freaks out with the honey, honey and vinegar scene ah, where he yells okay, at him. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like in Scorsese movies and stuff, like, he works all the time. Our buddy Ben Koldyke, who we did uh, the pilot of Boldly Going Nowhere with. He was yes. the lead of our... Uh, mm -hmm. Our, our pilot, a uh, very funny man. Oh, and he plays the um, husband of the couple that's buying Dee's baby. Yes. Correct. Yes, yeah. the great oh. Melanie Linsky. Mm -hmm. yep. Melanie, yep. Plays I feel Kate. like needs no description. Everyone mm -hmm. knows who Melanie is. Yeah, they were super funny. Okay, so, sorry, but do you have any history with drugs or alcohol? Never, neither. That's great. She is so um, good. I, I, I'm gonna throw in a plug for Melanie Linsky for a second here. She did a movie that I believe won Sundance one year. Uh, it was bought by Netflix and it kind of flew under the radar. It was a movie called I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. And mm -hmm. if you guys have not seen that movie, it is fantastic. Mm. It's her and Elijah Wood and uh, Christine uh, Woods. Is that her name? Wait. Yeah. The, who yeah, plays, yeah. Who plays the mother of my yeah. of Dennis's yeah. child. She's, she's incredible in the movie. Um, it's a thriller. It was made by Macon Blair, made by uh, the great Macon Blair, who's an uh, incredible writer and director. Anyway, if you haven't seen the movie, it's great. And if you guys have not seen the movie, you should check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's really, really, it's very Coen Brothers-esque. It's really, really funny, but it's also a thriller and it's dark and it's kind of gruesome at, in moments and there's action, but it's also what a super funny. Now, have you funny seen the Mythic Quest? Quest? Have I seen what? Mythic Quest. Mr. Quest. What is this? Have what? you seen Welcome to Wrexham? I'm what just about wondering your about you. You're talking about these <laughs> don't, I don't want to, these tiny indie right. movies that no one's ever heard of, and you're giving Melanie plugs for them, but you've never seen anything. And by the way, not just me. The Megan also works on Charlie I've created the show. You've never seen. I've it, seen but, as many know. episodes of Welcome to Wrexham as you have of AP Bio. Uh, untrue. How you've many got, episodes of AP Bio have you seen? Ten. At yeah, least. And I've seen and I've okay, I've seen eight episodes of Mythic Quest, so I'm almost there. Oh, how many of Wrexham? Because <laughs> that's what you started with. I, that's what I know. I he was talking about it the other I day. Didn't start you, with you, know, you just said I've seen as many. It doesn't matter. He was talking oh, about no, Mythic I... Quest the other day in the room and co complimenting uh, it specifically, David. Well, I was David's complimenting fantastic. his performance uh, in the show. I yeah, think the show great. is, uh, I think it's fantastic. I do. I just, you. uh, you're right. Listen, it's fair. It's fair. <laughs> it's fair. Part, part of it, part of it is that I can't get Jill to watch anything with me. And there are things that she wants to watch together 
But then I can't. So then I. But so then I'm like feel. But, but not like, Rob's things. Hemmed in. <laughs> no, 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 he no, does, no, no. I'm saying we don't watch anything together anymore. We we're not because our kids never go to bed anymore. It's, it's a high bed. class product. Can you imagine when we started this show that w there would come a point in time where we were fortunate and privileged enough to be in the situation where we're doing so much work that we had not seen each other's shit? I think about that all the time, actually, because well, when we true. were first getting started and we would have f people in our friend group that would get a job. Oh, yeah, yeah, you'd see everything. a big event. You'd oh, yeah. A shit. movie or a TV show would be a huge deal. And now, yeah, people are There's just, everybody's working, on, which is great. Planet. Did they get the heat turned? It feels like they got the heat turned yeah, back on. Yeah, the heat, the heat is turned back on today. It was the first day that we had heat in this building. So there's been and we no are on a heat. major studio lot. Yeah. It's in been, the middle of an atmospheric river. Yes. Yeah, a week and a half it took for them to turn their heat back on. Yes. I mean, we were like huddled around. And people are going to... I wore my thickest sweater today because I was like, it's going to be like I can already outside. imagine the creeps and the, and the, and the, and the uh, listeners already jumping on top of us for complaining about how cold it is in our office because we're in California. Yeah. It was 58 degrees. It was freezing. In my yeah. office. I was wearing my that's coat fucking for cold. an entire day. My that's office. cold. Yes. That's cold for an indoor environment. That's LA environment. cold. Yes. <laughs> that, no, but for, for an LA indoor, 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 indoor environment. environment. 58 anywhere, degrees in, a, if in you're an office building. In like North Dakota this time of year, you're like, 58 degrees. <laughs> Let's go to the beach. Okay, well. Yes, yes, if you're outside. But again, 58 degrees in your office when you're just sitting there at your desk, that's cold. Even in North people Dakota. People were wearing Even in the winter hats and shit. Yeah. Well, just yeah. for those people in, in the Dakotas, then we'll stop complaining about that. And and I really do want to talk about Brian Unger, just because I was watching this episode and realizing that he occupies such a funny space, which is like, he is a straight man to you guys, but not really. Like, yeah. he, like, he, like Charlie comes in to threaten him to, ask, to challenge him to a duel, duel and he accepts. Like, immediately. Immediately. Yeah. Well, 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 well. If it isn't the big time hot shot lawyer, man. Oh my God, I do not have time for you. Yes, yeah, sir, we both have busy schedules, so I'll make this quick. A shot mince words with you for long. I am challenging you, sir, to a duel. I accept. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I accept your challenge. That's really? the funniest yeah. scene that in the whole such episode. A yeah, funny that's scene. not straight man, funny man. That's too <laughs> funny, man. You know, he really is so good in that. Uh, it's it's like I almost start to become the straight man as he becomes the aggressor in that scene. <laughs> well, you're the antagonist uh, coming in, and then he turns antagonist. Like, yeah, he's really, really good. It was so funny, and he's talking about putting one between your teeth and it popping out the back of your head. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Charlie, you're just covering your mouth, like in the. It's such a good act break, too. It's like yeah. such a good, like, uh oh. Little known fact uh, Brian Unger was on the original Daily Show. Yep. He the was original, original Daily Show before yeah. Jon Stewart. When it was Craig, uh, Craig Kilborn. Kilborn, yeah. He yeah. was one of the correspondents. He was one of the original correspondents and was so super funny. duper funny on there. We have to talk about Vic Vinegar and Hugh Honey from this episode. This is the birth of them, correct? Uh, well, it's the birth the, and death. I don't birth think. And death. Yeah, I don't, yeah, they we didn't bring them back. Done. I think one and done with those. No, guys. because you it brought you like call it. yourself Vic Vinegar again when you're playing a bodyguard <laughs> of oh, the Brian oh, oh, Lefebvre. Yes stuff but maybe yes. Hugh honey doesn't come back in that and episode. I tell him that he's washed I'm like you're washed up vinegar or something <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that right like <laughs> you got no yeah. you got no uh follow through I, I can't but remember what I say to that storyline is so bizarre it's like you just announced you're gonna do a good real estate good realtor bad realtor good realtor, uh, yeah, bad I mean, realtor thing and then <laughs> we just watch it our best you know but Not. it's still funny it's really funny and uh, culminating in the line of Max saying I should take your wife upstairs and show her what it's like to be deep inside a really big house how about I take your wife upstairs and show her what it's like to be deep inside a really big house what huh? what what yeah, yeah. Just, it doesn't make just, any sense it, yeah no <laughs> But there's some I, there's something good about like being young enough to not feel as though we need to justify it more, mm -hmm. you know? Like, well, the fans funny. say you didn't because the fans love it. Yeah, so. they say yeah. be into it. There funny's you go. funny. Funny's funny. And if you think this episode is not that good, mm -hmm. I would say you're out of touch and you're dead wrong. Uh, us all coming together at the house <laughs> felt <laughs> zany. Yeah, like silly. We, we didn't need to do it. You mean when when we come over and bash the door in? No, that's great. Oh, oh, oh with the end. At the, the end, with yeah. D. Like we need to get to. I need a place to hide. And I don't Frank know. Want? I liked you guys all ending up in the pool. <laughs> don't well, buy the house. Yeah. Frank doesn't want to buy the house. Yeah, he thinks he thinks that we're 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 merging the baby in the house thing. So we're gonna. Yeah. Do I you think us ending up in the pool was something we came up with on the day? 
Like we had a different no. ending scripted I and we're like, so. I don't think, no, I think that was in the script. I actually liked it coming back because you announced at the beginning, should we merge the ideas? And then you mm -hmm. end up merging them, which I right. think is kind of funny. It's yeah. satisfying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why we did it. We wanted to seem smarter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we merged. They, honey, they made a merge reference and then they did merge. No, but I'm sure that is why we did it. Yeah. <laughs> The stunt of the uh, of Jack Knight. Uh, that's good yeah, stuff. that that was a stunt. That was a stunt person. Was stunt, a stunt woman. Watch me bust out this sweet jackknife. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> I've never seen before or since a stunt person. They're always. I mean, they they really throw themselves like a hundred percent into everything that they do, and they always want another take. And they're always like obviously very safe, but still they want another take because they want to get it better. Mm -hmm. And you got to kind of rein them in and be like, we we got it. That was the first time I had ever seen a stunt person go, "Did you get it?" And we were like, "Yeah, we think we got it." And she's like, "Good." We're like, "Do you want another take?" And she's like, "No." She's like, "No, I broke that's it. because there is no way to fake that. You just, you just legit. Have, you just got to take it. You just got yeah, to take, take it. Gotta take it. There's no tighten up like, those abs and." <laughs> In you go. Yeah, that is a belly flop. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you just great. and she hit it hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she yeah. nailed it. Dee has had probably the best stunt performances. Like amazing people yeah. work for. Her. I like we, except a lot of them were her. Yeah, well, she she as well has done great things, but she's also had great women working with her doing some incredible mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, and the double was great. You, you it absolutely you looks tell. like it's her. No, you can't tell. Doing yeah. that. No, you can't tell. Was at all. that a stunt double of you guys kicking through the door from the other side? I love that bit that you were going to ram the door uh -huh. from one side and then you don't get to. So then you decide to oh, ram it yeah, from no. the inside <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah. And then there's like a lot of kicking it that you guys are doing. Hey, you know, I said I'd never it? kicked in it. That was us. Yeah. I said I'd never kicked in a door yeah, before. Yeah, right but there. I, but it's not quite. It wasn't but you're quite kicking out a door. Through it. It's kicking a set out a door. door. It's just a set door. You know? And kicking through. Yeah. And it was. Well, and it wasn't. It but was. it wasn't a set. I remember that was a whole thing because it was a breakaway door. We had it was to a breakaway. We had to take the door off of the hinges right. and put a fake yeah. put a fake door. If you on. look closely, there's actually some mismatches of where the breaks are throughout the episode. But oh, there's also right, yeah. in that scene another fly that's uh -huh. buzzing above Charlie's head when he's yep. talking to the lawyer. Let me handle this, Frank. It's not Bullard. No, he's making a few good, good points. Good look, crap. buddy, I know a lot about the law and various other lawyerings. Um, I'm well-educated, well-versed. I know that situations like this, real estate-wise, they're very complex. Actually, they're pretty simple. The forms are all standard, boilerplate. Okay, well, we're all hungry. We're gonna get to our hot plate soon enough, all right? Now, let's say you and I go toe-to-toe -to -toe in bird law and see who comes out the victor. You know, I don't think I'm gonna do anything um, close to that, and I can see clearly you know nothing about the law. It seems like you have a tenuous grasp on the English language in general. Okay, well, filibuster. Now, yeah. just to be clear, to digitally take a fly <laughs> out of a shot is so cheap mm -hmm. and so easy because it's just like a few frames. But was it in 2009? A hundred percent. Yeah. Let's go back and look at our fly budget. <laughs> Wait, I mean, as I pointed out, we didn't even put a sound effect in when that when 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 we go through the door and the, and the freaking yeah. battering ram lands on the ground, there's no sound effect. Yeah, no clang clang, nothing. Just mm -hmm. I don't know, that one got missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like hey. they destroyed like whole planets and movies years before we were born, and it looked realistic. You know, they can take a fly out mm -hmm. of a out of a show in 2009. That's right. But I don't want to do take the flies out. It looks makes it looks real. Yeah, because it gives it more life. Rob know? thinks you're dead wrong. No, I think you're dead wrong. I think what happens is it takes There's you out of it. There's not enough flies in MythiQuest. I got to get think that. I think it's <laughs> yeah. enough flies. That's part Office of the problem. Office too That's your problem, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. I, think I think that's why I'm not responding you're to not it. You're not responding. You're just the <laughs> lack of flies. You're picking up <laughs> You heard what well, you read about it. You heard grounded, the, you know? You read about it. The, yeah, you read about the, it. The, it takes you out of it insofar as Megan noticed that there was a fly. If you notice that there's a fly somewhere. Why wouldn't there be a fly, though? Yeah. Because it's on TV. Yeah. Speaking of flies, um, my son asked about teleportation and he's like, what, can we, can people do that yet? And I was like, no, but maybe eventually one day, but it's a, kind of an amazing potential technology where it, it basically takes you down to an atomic level, sends that information somewhere and then rearranges all the atoms. And he was like, whoa, that's cool. I'm like, yeah, but what happens? Just imagine this. If while you're there, <laughs> a fly comes into the chamber with you. Wait, and he then, pitched you the plot you know, of the fly? I pitched it to him. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, is, this is great. No, I, I was like, your hear. kid is a genius, I man. pitched it to him. And he was like, 
what, what, what would happen? And I was like, well, on the other end, you would be part man and part fly. And he was like, that's the coolest thing <laughs> I've ever heard. And I'm like, well, what do you think would happen? And he was like, man, you'd like probably eat a bunch of shit. And I was like, yeah. Well, son, let me show you. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but no, like, you'd become very attractive man. to women. Here's the VHS. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow VHS. you become more virile. For a minute, and then it takes a turn. Then it, it takes, a, <laughs> it takes a bit of a turn. Real turn. Yeah, when you're at the coffee shop with the with your your lovely lady that uh, you know you've become much more masculine for, and then you you know pour the entire thing of sugar in your coffee. That's where things start to take a turn. <laughs> That's where it took. That's a turn not for really you. where it takes a turn. I can't remember. It's He's been a long time sure. since I've seen it. Last night I drove over over Coldwater Canyon in the rain. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um, because that's where it was my really raining yesterday. Scary, yeah. Scary mm-hmm. and like sketchy, big time. Like the amount of water that was just gushing down the side of the hills. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. You got to get caught you, in like you think a, a street line. named Cold Water Canyon. Yeah, I mean, it, I was rain. warned. I was warned. You were warned. Uh, you were told. <laughs> right. Yeah, you didn't listen. I was on my way to see. I want to talk about it, Mr. John Bryan. Mm. Uh, who's scoring uh, the movie that I directed so and exciting. have been working on for so many years. Cool. And I love this dude's work. It, he yeah. is incredible. But anyway, it was a scary, That's scary, cool. scary drive over there. Such was, a talented guy. Yes. And uh, in fact, we were scoring uh, a scene that you happen to be in. Spoiler alert. Um, but uh, Does that like awaken something in you of like some primal, like getting home through like a storm and like, oh, I see. you know, that sort of. No, I was just like, so I don't scared. know that I want to die. <laughs> like listening to Smartless. Um, like, <laughs> You know, it's, like, it's better to die listening to Smartless than to die listening to your own podcast. Yeah. Imagine if you were. Now that would if, be. Yeah. If like the, you know you're you're dead, you know, and like you're all mangled, and but the stereo's still going. Yeah. And it's po- and it's the Sunny podcast. Yeah. And well, like, here's what goes come up the and they're like, oh that goes man, into the story, yeah. listening here, here's to Here's what himself. happened though. Like it really, <laughs> I got to a really hectic point, a really like where the water was really coming down. Oh, I thought you meant a hectic and smartless. I was like, I don't think those guys no, get hectic. No, but I was at the, I was on the ad and uh, Sean was reading some ad I didn't want to listen to. And I was like, oh. I, I can't look at my phone uh-uh. to skip the ad because I really got to focus to get through this little hairy part here. And I was like, but I don't want to have the hairy thing happen while I'm listening to the ad. It would have been fine in the regular part of the the episode, but not hairy. These are the thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of ads. Hey, you guys know what happened to me the other day? Uh, you guys ever been on the go and, you know, just not had time for like a full meal? Yes. Has that ever happened to you? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, that's like yeah. an extremely common occurrence. That's why I'm glad that uh, we're supported by Huel today. Because okay? it helped me out in a pinch, you know, and it's an easy and delicious way to get a healthy meal when I can't slow down to eat. Right, that's because uh, with Huel, you don't eat, you drink. Huel Black Edition is a high-protein, nutritionally complete meal in a convenient shake. That means it has everything your body needs in two scoops, including 27 vitamins and minerals and 40 grams of protein. That's right. And Huel Black is vegan, gluten-free, lactose-free. It's got no GMOs, palm oil, or artificial sweeteners. You know, plus it comes in delicious flavors that taste like cake. Oh, man, cake. I had so much cake over the holidays. Let them drink cake. Let them have their cake and drink it too. Mm. Yeah, or just drink the Huel because that's all your body needs. Go to Huel.com slash Sunny to get a free t-shirt and shaker with your order. That's H-U-E-L dot com slash Sunny and get a free shirt and shaker with your order. Go to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Meet with an expert who will do them for you. TurboTax experts can relieve you from the stress of taxes and file for you so you can do not taxes. Show your eyes things that are not taxes. Unpack a moving box of not taxes. Taste not taxes. Sing not taxes a lullaby. Hope not taxes sleeps through the night. Grab a saddle and ride not taxes into the sunset. With TurboTax, an expert will do your taxes from start to finish, ensuring your taxes are done right, guaranteed, so you can relax. (laughs) Feels good to be done with your taxes, doesn't it? Come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Visit TurboTax.com and learn more. Intuit TurboTax. Full service products only. 
Video meeting while expert does your taxes required. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. That's with an S. Guarantees. You guys got any, any New Year's resolutions? No. I didn't do that this year. I've tried it in the past, but no. I'm good. <laughs> right on. Yeah? Fuck yeah. It. I, I didn't either. I didn't either. I, I make resolutions all year. Are you all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's given up already. You resolved to finish the sentence or you're going to give up? On <laughs> my mouth did not. My mouth. It wasn't my, it was my mouth that gave up. Yeah. My mouth gave up and then my body was like, well, you're just not going to fucking do it, mouth? Really? <laughs> and then I just, then my whole body yeah. gave up. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, was like. What about you? Did you was that set up for you? Did you? No, yeah, it wasn't set up. One? I mean, I, yeah. yes, but my, <laughs> my resolutions are, are only in place to, for shame, uh, because uh, I Catholic shit. Yeah, like where I will, because I'm like you. I mean, I we're, we're all trying, all, all all year trying to do exactly trying to better trying ourselves. To set goals for myself year. And year so what now. I find is I make I set a goal, and then my my goal this year uh, was a very simple one, which was to stop complaining so much. Just stop fucking complaining. Just whenever I feel like I want to complain, just be more grateful. Because A, it doesn't get you what you want. B, it just makes you look and feel like a piece of shit. Just be grateful. And uh, man, it's hard. Yeah, you, yeah, it is yeah hard. You, I feel like you. I might have doubled down. Yeah, well, that ship sailed. Part right? of the problem like you, with with resolutions is sometimes <laughs> right. it feels like you actually go the opposite direction. Yeah, and do it more so. Yeah. Um, but right, uh, it makes it make, makes it you create a stigma. Yeah, and then it becomes even more appealing. Yeah, to think. but but I will say that if you if you do at least make some kind of internal proclamation that um, you hold yourself maybe a little bit more accountable, so. I find myself maybe complaining, maybe just as much. I don't know, but then I'm going. Well, I think that's a noble. That? That's a noble goal, right? It's a, it's good. I mean, that's the right. That's the Eckhart Tolle. I mean, that's the first step, right? Is recognizing it when you're doing it. Yeah, like observing it. So good on you. Good on you. I did. I did have one. This wasn't a New Year's resolution, but I I did lay down a challenge mm. to my uh, to two of my nephews. I've got three three nephews. My sister's got three boys. They're older. Um. My 18-year-old nephew and my 22-year-old nephew, I challenged them to a pull-up contest. Ooh. Now, I'm mm -hmm. 46. I'm mm -hmm. about to turn 47. And I told those boys, I was like, don't let me beat you in this pull-up contest. Mm -hmm. But now I'm determined to, to beat There's these There's an 18-year-old in the mix? Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> but he's big. He's big. <laughs> Me at 18. Can, can, he's strong, but he's big. He's heavy. So much energy. I'm not saying he's fat. He's big. You know what big, I mean? Big, so it's hard to pull. So I don't up. know, but but the other, the 22 year old is a little a little leaner, and he's been hitting the gym a lot. You know, so I was like, how All many right, push This will be a good challenge you for you. Sorry, pull, pull how ups, many push ups? It's a very different pull ups. Pull -ups. Pull -ups. Is that hand forward or? Uh, yeah, and I'm a traditional like wide grip pull ups. Okay, how many are you getting? Not the pull grips. Um, I, I'm probably at uh, 14. Wow, that's good. I'm very impressed. That's by very that. good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I good. can't do one. Well, it's, it's not bad. It's, He's been do, you've been doing them with with like weights tied to. I haven't been doing yeah. that. I've just you know. So that's that's I'm training for it. Okay, because uh, I said that we gotta we gotta Non-stop. No touching the ground. Feet don't touch down. Oh no 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 no. All the way. I, I go chin I, over the bar. No, nah, I go to mouth. I go to mouth. That's, that's this, far this enough. It starts to get that's a little strainy in a way enough, that I feel yeah. like is kind of negative. I think that's high enough. So I didn't do any gym resolutions, but my resolution was based on something I started doing at the gym, which is that my trainer started telling me when I would like, because uh, I would lift to the point where I like failed, you know, couldn't lift whatever I was lifting. And she would always say like, good job, you failed. And I was like, that's just not, like and for that me, doesn't work that, for me? Do, that doesn't compute. But then I realized like, no, that's like, that should be the new motto for 2023 is like trying yeah. and failing at stuff and then feeling good about the fact that mm -hmm. I failed, failed at something. Yeah, yeah. because mm -hmm. that means you're like pushing yourself and- It doesn't feel good to hear that though, yeah, does yeah. it? No, it doesn't. But I, but I kind of am like in a place where I've got to get used to it because I'm like trying so many new things. And if I keep letting like every failure just rock me, I'm never going to like- What a great metaphor it, though. But so. like the reason you build, you build muscles because your yeah. muscle is failing. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the only way that you can grow is if you actually take yourself to that place. Exactly. That's true. You so be just willing like your muscles. To fail. Yeah. Got to be willing to fail. To grow. So that's um, That is a very hard. good metaphor. Yeah. So something that, that I had a trainer uh, who would often do this thing where, you know, let's say we're doing something like 20 reps and we would go, 
he would go up to 10, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then he would start going down nine, eight, seven, six. And it was kind of like counting down, right? Uh. Yeah. And I found that psychologically, I was like that. I was like, I had to tell him finally, I was like, you know what? When you count down, it saps my energy. I don't like I, a countdown. I need you as well. to be counting up all the way. I need <laughs> I've got to go to the stars, up, 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 up. I'll also yeah, break stars. counts. Seriously, like psychologically, I'll break me. counts into little smaller sets. So do I. Like, I'm like, <laughs> if I'm doing 15, I do five, five, and five. Exactly. Do you do that too? <laughs> yes, I do. Hey. Yes, I do. Hey, man. No wonder you've been you working. Because then I'm like, years. I only have to get to five, and then I only have to get to five, and then I only have to get to five. Yes. We should hang out. Dude, we should hang out.